The story begins in 1963, when Henry Ford II, the president of Ford Company, wanted to buy Ferrari, an Italian sports car company. Ford was interested in participating in endurance races, such as the famous 24-hour race at Le Mans in France. Ferrari was the dominator of this competition, winning it six times in a row between 1958 and 1963. Ford sent a delegation to Italy to negotiate with Enzo Ferrari, the founder and owner of the company. Initially, Ferrari agreed to sell a majority stake in his shares to Ford, but at the last moment he changed his mind. The reason was that Ferrari did not want to give up control over his racing division, which was his passion. Ferrari rejected Ford's offer and ended the talks. Afterwards, Ferrari accepted an offer from Fiat, which bought 50% of Ferrari's shares, leaving Enzo Ferrari in control of the racing division. Ford was furious and humiliated by Ferrari's gesture. He decided to build his own sports car that would beat Ferrari at Le Mans. He hired a team of engineers and designers led by Roy Lunn, who worked on a secret project called Ford GT. The goal was to create a car with a powerful engine, an aerodynamic body, and a low weight. The Lola MK6 GT was a very important precursor to the Ford GT and was conceived by Eric Broadley at the end of 1962 to be accepted into the experimental Grand Touring class and debuted in 1963 racing in various events, including the 24 Hours of Le Mans, where it impressed Ford executives who were looking for a way to beat Ferrari in endurance racing. Ford decided to collaborate with Lola and hired Broadley as a consultant to design and build a new car based on the Lola MK6 GT. The Ford GT shared many components and features with the Lola MK6 GT, such as the monocoque chassis, the suspension system, the magnesium wheels, and the aerodynamic bodywork. It also used a modified version of the Ford the fifth 8 engine that powered the Lola MK6 GT. After several prototypes and tests, Ford's team developed the final model, called Ford GT40. The name came from its height of only 40 inches, 101.6 centimeters. The car had a 4.7 liter V8 engine that produced 350 horsepower. It could reach a top speed of over 320 kilometers per hour. Ford GT40 debuted in races in 1964, but did not have immediate success. The car suffered from technical problems and was not reliable. At the same time, Ferrari continued to dominate Le Mans with its fast and resistant models. Ford did not give up and invested more resources in developing and improving his car. In 1965, they introduced the MK2 version, with a larger 7-liter, 427 cubic inch, engine and a more robust gearbox. They also hired Carroll Shelby's team to manage the racing program. However, at Le Mans, none of the six cars finished the race, due to mechanical problems or accidents. Ferrari won again, but Ford again did not give up. In 1966, Ford participated in Le Mans with the model GT40 Mark II, which had a 7-liter V8 engine, capable of producing over 450 horsepower. Ford sent eight cars to the race of which three were driven by American drivers, three by British drivers, and two by Belgian drivers. The race started on June 18, at 4 p.m. From the beginning, Ford imposed a fast pace, trying to exhaust its opponents. Ford cars dominated the standings, easily overtaking their competitors. Ferrari had technical problems and accidents, which led to the abandonment of all its cars in the first ten hours of the race. After Ferrari was eliminated from the race, Ford had no serious rival. The only threat came from within the Ford team, where there was a rivalry between the American and British divisions. In the last hours of the race, a close fight took place between car number two driven by Ken Miles and Danny Hume, and car number one driven by Dan Gurney and Foyt. Car number two was in front, but with a small difference from car number one. In the last hour of the race, Ford management decided to order the two cars to reduce their speed and cross the finish line together, to create a spectacular image. Miles and Hume reluctantly accepted the order, but Gurney and Foyt were more enthusiastic. On June 19th, at 4 p.m., 
The two Ford cars crossed the finish line almost simultaneously, followed shortly by car number five driven by Ronnie Bucknam and Dick Hutcherson. It was a total triumph for Ford, which occupied the first three places on the podium and beat Ferrari at Le Mans for the first time. Initially, the race organizers declared that car number two was the winner, but after a controversy related to the regulation, they changed the verdict and announced that car number one was the one that won the race. The reason was that car number one started behind car number two at the start of the race, so it covered a longer distance in 24 hours. Miles and Hume were disappointed by the organizer's decision, but accepted it sportingly. They were ranked second with car number two, at a difference of only eight meters from car number one. Thus, Dan Gurney and Foyt were declared the winners of the Le Mans race in 1966 with car Ford GT40 Mark II number one. Ford's victory was a historic moment for the automotive industry and motorsport. It showed that Ford could compete with the most prestigious European brands and surpass them. Ford GT40 remained in history as one of the most legendary sports cars of all time. It was admired for its elegant design, its extraordinary performance, and its fascinating story. It inspired generations of cars and racing enthusiasts. It is a symbol of ambition, determination, and triumph of Henry Ford II.